Hi everyone, in this video I'm going over 9.4, uh, solving quadratic equations in quadratic form. So just to give you an overview, this is where we're going to be applying the techniques that we've used for solving quadratic equations to equations that are not officially quadratic. So what we're going to do is work with an equation that can be reduced down to a quadratic equation and then we're going to use our same kind of factoring, quadratic formula, square root property, all those techniques that we've used on quadratic equations to these other equations. So I have a contextualized problem here for you. Um, I used to love to make paper airplanes as a kid, and uh, I used to go up on my roof and and throw my you know latest paper airplane off the roof to see how far it would go. Often it wouldn't go very far, but um, that's how I would spend some of my time as an only child. <laughs> um, these two links, you can actually check these out if you want. I'm not going to bring them up for you now, but the this is the current world record holder. Um, basically, you could see someone throw a paper airplane a really long distance, and this is, I believe, still the current record holder. Um, down here, what I've created are some hypothetical equations that track uh, different paper airplane flights of my own. So it says my first paper airplane's height above the ground, h, in feet, with respect to its horizontal distance from the base of my house, x, in feet, could be represented by this function. So really, it should say f. So since we have f, it should be, this is how far, uh, sorry, how high the plane is, right? The height above ground would be F, and how far it is from the house would be X. So what we're gonna do is kind of analyze each of these. This is the first paper airplane, that's why I called it F. This is the second paper airplane, so I called it S. And this is the third paper airplane, so I called it T. So what we're wanting to do is figure out how far each one of these flights went if these are a record of their paths. All right, so if I want to know how far this thing went, what I really need to do is set f equal to zero. So the first one, I'll set f equal to zero and solve for x. So notice the difference here and what makes it not a quadratic is that we have a fourth degree term, right? This is a quadratic term, but we have this fourth degree term. So this is not quadratic. So what we tend to do is we let u represent x squared in this case. So basically u is always going to come in for this middle variable. If u equals x squared, then that would mean u squared would equal x to the fourth if you just square both sides here. So that tells me a way of substituting out uh, x to the fourth. So where I have x to the fourth, I now can write u squared. Where I have uh, x squared, I can now write u. So zero equals negative u squared, right? Instead of x to the fourth, I'm writing u squared plus two u plus 15. So this now is a quadratic equation, right? So I've reduced a non-quadratic down to a quadratic. I now can solve this. It looks like this one may factor, right? So the a times c method, you have negative 15. And then we're looking to add up to a two so I could take a positive five and a negative three to do that, right? So five times negative three is our negative 15, five minus three is two. And now I can go through these grouping steps, right? Because A is not one, so I do have to go through these grouping steps. So I have negative U squared plus five U minus three U plus 15. Right, using these as coefficients. Now factor by grouping. 
I have negative u factored out front and u minus 5 left behind. Then factor out a negative 3, leaving behind a u minus 5. And then factor out u minus 5. So I have 0 equals u minus 5 times negative u minus 3. So 0 needs to equal either u minus 5 or 0 needs to equal negative u minus 3 from the zero product property. So adding 5 and then adding u. So I'm seeing that 5 equals u or u equals negative 3. So now what we do is we go back to the variable that we care about, right? This problem did not ask us anything about the variable u. It asked us about the variable x. So what I do here is now I replace u with x squared, and I'll replace that here and here. So what we're really caring about is when 5 equals x squared, right? Not u, but x squared. And then we want to know when x squared equals negative 3, right, from this problem. Um, keep in mind, we're looking for the distance this plane is from the house, right? So this is a contextualized application problem. We're looking to solve for real distances from the house, so not negative distances, right? So this x squared equals a negative number. This won't produce anything real. So I'll just cross this off, right? A squared equals a negative. That won't produce anything real. That'll just be imaginary solutions. But this one up here, I can take the plus and minus square root of 5. That equals the square root of x squared. So these do cancel, and I get plus and minus root 5 equals x. But I'm not going to be talking about negative distance. Remember, x is a distance from the base of the house. Right, that's what it said in the problem here. X is the distance from the base of the house. For that reason, the negative doesn't make any sense. That would be a negative distance. We don't have negative distance in reality. So this would be root 5 equals X, which is about equal to, just for our information, this is about equal to 2.236. And that would be a number of feet that this first plane went from the house before hitting the ground. So this is the first one. Keep in mind what the question is. It's which plane uh, flew the farthest. I guess I should have read that, right? We're looking for which plane flew the farthest before hitting the ground. We just figured out that this first plane went about 2.236 feet before hitting the ground, so not very far. So I'm going to turn the page and work on this one. Okay, so we're now going to try to figure out how far the second plane went. So I have S of X equals, sorry for the flipping back and forth, it's negative X minus 1. Plus X minus 1 squared. And then it's plus 15. Okay. So here's our second equation. So again, I want to figure out how far this thing went from the house. So I need to plug in a height of zero because that's when this thing hits the ground. Right? It's done with its flight once its height is zero. So we have negative x minus 1 to the fourth plus x minus 1 squared plus 15. And again, we want to make a substitution. So for this one, I'm going to let u equal this middle, which is x minus 1 all squared. If that's the case, then u squared would equal x minus 1 to the fourth, right? If you just square both sides here. So this gives me a relationship between u squared and x minus 1 to the fourth, and this gives me a relationship between u and x minus 1 squared. So in other words, I can 
replace x minus 1 to the fourth with a u squared. So I'll have u squared coming in right here. And then I'll replace x minus 1 squared with u. So I'll have a u coming in right there. All right, so 0 equals negative u squared, right? That's this replacement, plus u plus 15. All right, so let's try to solve this by factoring. If we have a times c equals negative 1 times 15, we'd have negative 15. Looking for factors of negative 15 that add up to a 1 in this case. All right, 3 and 5 don't work. 1 and 15 don't work. So, in other words, factoring. This one does not factor in this case. So we need a different approach. So the quadratic formula. So use the quadratic formula instead. So in other words, I'll have that a is negative 1, b is 1, and c is 15. So u will equal the opposite of b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. All right, so this is what u equals. Since u is our variable here, that's the same variable that I'm solving for. So let's input this. So first thing you want to press is fraction bar. And negative 1 plus square root of 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times 15. Scroll down, 2 times negative 1. So it looks like I get this number. I'll write this down. So I tend to kind of just make note. This is u plus. That means I got this from the plus case. That's just the notation that I use. Equals 1 minus root 61 over 2. And then if you just go left, 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 a bunch, just need to change that plus into subtract. So I'm getting a plus in the middle now, right? We get the conjugate, basically, of our other solution. So I get u minus as 1 plus root 61 all over 2. Okay? So keep in mind, we do not care about the variable u. We're just using u as a placeholder for x, right? So what I now need to do is use this substitution in reverse, right? So I'm now going to replace u with x minus 1 all squared. So down here, I'll have x minus 1 squared equals 1 minus root 61 over 2. And over here, I have x minus 1 squared equals 1 plus root 61 over 2. All right, keep in mind, this is a real quote-unquote situation where we're looking for only real solutions. We're looking for positive distances from the base of the house. Okay, so what I'm going to do real quick is just look at what this number actually is. So if you type in 1 minus root 61 over 2, you get this negative number to appear. Sorry. So that's for this, this number here is this negative number. So in other words, I have something squared, right? Something squared equals a negative number. So this is not real. This would produce an imaginary result. So this one does not produce anything real for this situation. For the other case, when I have a plus here, this is this positive number. So this one will produce something real. Okay. So this is the only one I'm going to work with going forward. To solve this, we take a square root. Square root. Less and minus, yep, you can have square roots of square roots. <clears throat> so on the left, these cancel, 
and we get x minus 1 equals plus n minus the square root of 1 plus the square root of 61 all over 2. And then just to solve for x, all I need to do is add 1. So x equals 1 plus and minus the square root of 1 plus the square root of 61 all over 2. So I'm going to type in these two answers and just see what numbers they are, just to see if any of them make sense. So typing that in, so 1, hopefully you can see this 1, and then plus fraction, I guess I have square root first, square root, and then fraction, 1 plus square root 61, scroll down, 2. So the plus case gives us this. So I'll say x plus gives us about 3.0988. I'll just carry that to four decimal places, and that would be a number of feet. x minus, so I'm going to go back and just change that plus to minus, and this gives us a negative number. So I'll write that down here. X minus is about negative 1.0988, and that means that that is a mathematically true solution, but we're not counting negative distances. We're just counting how far this plane went from the house positively. So although this is mathematically true, the math doesn't know that we're doing this, you know, problem where we're measuring distance with x. So it's up to us to realize, oh, I'm just going to throw that one out. And this is how far the second plane went. Okay, so our first one went this far. So the second plane is now in the lead by a little bit. It went a little bit over three feet away from the house. So we now want to see how far the third plane went, this t of x. Let me see what t of x was. It's negative 3x plus 3 root x plus 15. Okay. All right, so again, we want to know how far this third plane, right? I call it t because it's the third plane. We want to know how far this thing went from the house. So it'll reach its maximum distance from the house as it hits the ground. So in other words, its height is zero as it hits the ground. And in all these, I'm basically swapping out this middle variable. So I'm going to let u equal the square root of x. If that's the case, then u squared Again, just simply square both sides, and you'll get u squared equals x. So this tells me how I switch things out. So this u will come in for root x, and this u squared will come in for x. So I'll have 0 equals negative 3u squared, right? I'm replacing any occurrence of x with u squared, any occurrence of root x with u, plus 3u, plus 15. All right, I'm noticing that every coefficient is divisible by negative 3, so I'll divide out a negative 3. So 0 equals u squared minus u minus 5. And I can again use the quadratic formula. So I have that a is 1, b is negative 1, and c is negative 5. So u equals opposite of b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 5 all over 2 times 1. And simplifying this, I'll go ahead and type this into the calculator. 
So fraction, 1 plus square root negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 5 over 2 times 1. So it looks like I get this number for u plus. I'll just use that same notation. So u plus equals 1 plus root 21 all over 2. And by the way, that's about equal to 2.791. And then u minus, if I change this plus to minus, then I get the conjugate. All right, 1 minus root 21 over 2. And just for our information, that's about equal to negative 1.791. All right, so now going back to x's. All right, I'm going back here using this substitution now in reverse to get x's back involved. So instead of u, I'll actually have the square root of x equals 1 plus root 21 over 2. And then here I'll have root x equals 1 minus root 21 over 2. However, this is this negative number about. And I can't have a square root equaling a negative number, so I know nothing good is going to come from this. Right, because out of this square root is coming a negative number, and that's not going to produce anything real for us. So I'll just work with this one going forward. So root x equals 1 plus root 21 all over 2. To solve this, I need to square both sides. Okay, so x equals... Looks like I'm running out of lead. One sec. Yeah, it looks like I totally ran out of lead. All right, switching to pen. So I have x equals uh, 1 plus root 21 all over 2 squared. Um, I'm going to use my calculator to see what that squares to. So come back here, form this plus case. There's that 1 plus root 21 all over 2 squared. So go ahead and press answer and then square. It's this number. Okay, so I'll write that down. And just for our information, that's about... 7.791 feet. Okay. Um, I did square to solve right here, right? So this would be a potential little red flag moment because squaring to solve means that extraneous solutions could appear. So here was the x that our solution is. So if I go back here and just to check that I get a zero, just to make sure it's not an extraneous solution. So I'll plug that number in to this equation right here. So negative three times answer plus three times the square root of answer plus 15. I'm hoping for a zero. Yep. So the number I got is not extraneous. So this would be our distance for the third flight. So in other words, because that number is the greatest, the third flight, the third plane, went the farthest.
Okay. That was the original question is, which plane went the farthest? So we see that this third one went about 7.8 feet. The second one went about 3.1 feet. And the first one went about 2.2 feet. So this one wins. All right, I'll do a couple others. Um, kind of ones that I haven't done before. So I'm, I'm skipping to page 119. All right, so I'll do this one and I'll do maybe one other. And of course, I'll, I'll post the solutions to everything next to the video. So for this problem, um, this is page 119, part three. This is not about paper airplanes. This is just a, a pure math problem. So we're looking for any or all solutions to this equation, real, negative, uh, imaginary, any solutions to this we want. It's now no longer measuring distance, right? We're just finding all X's that satisfy this equation now. So what I'll do is I'll let U equal um, X squared minus four, this piece. That would mean that U squared would equal X squared minus four all squared. So that tells me what to do with this piece. Instead of x squared minus four all squared, I'll just write u squared there. So I'll have u squared plus u minus six equals zero. Okay, it looks like this one factors. So u plus three, u minus two equals zero. If you check that, that should factor that way. u plus three equals zero. u minus two equals zero. Subtract three, add two. So in other words, u equals negative three or u equals two. However, u, right, I need to go back to this and involve x again, because the problem didn't ask us anything about u's, the variable u, it asked us about x's. So I now need to go back. So instead of u, I'll write x squared minus four equals negative three, or x squared minus four equals two, right? Replacing u with x squared minus four. Add four, add four, add four, add four. So x squared equals one, or x squared equals six. Solving for x, I take a square root. I'll take a square root of both sides using plus and minus, square root square root, plus and minus. So in other words, x equals plus and minus one, and x equals plus and minus root six. Of course, you can check all these answers. So you could plug in plus and minus one in for x, make sure you get a zero on the left. You can plug in plus and minus root six on the left, make sure you get a zero. Also, I have more 9.4 stuff, even throughout page 121, all the way through to uh, page 125. What I'll do is I'll, I'll look at page 124, and this will be the last one I do on this video. All right. So here I'm going to let u equal x to the negative one. This, this sometimes is the hardest thing to decide, like what substitution to make. In all the cases we've done, it's been the middle variable that we let equal u. u squared, if I square both sides, would be equal to x to the negative two. So this tells me that where I have x to the negative two, I'll replace that with u squared. 
then where I have x to the negative 1, I'll replace that with u. So I'll have 15u squared minus 4u minus 4 equals 0. All right, this thing may factor. So if you use the a times c method, you're getting negative 60 as a times c, right? 15 times negative 4. And then we're trying to add up to negative 4. So negative 10 and 6 looks like do that, right? Negative 10 times 6 is negative 60. Negative 10 plus 6 is negative 4. So I'll rewrite the middle term. And then factor by grouping. So I'll factor out of this group, and then I'll factor out of this group. So it looks like we share a 5u. So 5u, 3u minus 2. Factor out a 2, leaving behind a 3u minus 2. And then factor out the 3u minus 2 leaving behind 5u plus 2. This all equals 0. So 0 product property, it must be that 3u minus 2 equals 0, or 5u plus 2 equals 0. Solve for u. So I'll add 2 here. I'll subtract 2 there. So 3u equals 2, or 5u equals negative 2. And keep in mind, we're just doing a pure math problem. We're looking for any or all solutions here. Divide by 3, divide by 5. So u equals 2 thirds, or u equals negative 2 fifths. But again, u is not the variable we care about. We care about x's. So I'm going to use this substitution now in reverse. Okay, so where I have u, I'll replace that with x to the minus 1. All right x to the minus 1, same as 1 over x. And to solve those, you could just flip everything. So if 1 over x equals 2 thirds, then x would equal 3 halves. And if 1 over x equals negative 2 fifths, then x would equal 5 over negative 2. Okay. So I'll go ahead and check both of these. And that'll be the last thing we do in this video. So maybe I'll check the negative 5 halves. Right? So I'll enter that. So 5 over negative 2, I'll just enter that in memory of the calculator. And now I can reference it just by pressing ANS down here. So what I'm doing is plugging this back into the original right here. So 15 times answer raised to the negative 2. Scroll to the right, minus 4 times answer raised to the negative 1 minus 4. I'm hoping to get a 0 out of that, and I do. All right. So these would be our solutions down here. All right. Talk to you next time.